InstaWise. Big ideas. You know, it's like a white lie issue. You know, you say, well, is a white lie acceptable? Uh, I would say, well, the best that you can come up with is acceptable. That, that doesn't mean it's, it's optimal, though, right? Like, I, 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 I'll give you a, a foolish example because it's the best that I can do at the moment. But, you know, if you, if you have a loved one who says, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> the answer to that question is, I don't answer questions like that. That's the answer, right? Because the other answer is the white lie, I mean, at least in this context. And that means that, on the one hand, you're maintaining the, the, the positive contract between you and the person who's asking the question, but then you're still sacrificing the truth within that. So you're, you're, you're maintaining your relationship with the higher order truth, but sacrificing a lower order truth. And, and that would be better than the reverse, but it's not as good as not sacrificing the truth at all. And I would say that if you're maybe fortunate, because sometimes it's a matter, because you can be in a situation where all your choices are bad. I've seen people in situations like that. I've probably been in situations like that. And maybe that is what's happening in that story, is every choice Abraham has in front of him is bad. But I can't help but think that it's more than that. It means that if you're doing the best you can, and it's not perfect, it can still be good enough. That's how it looks to me. Thank you. Uh, hello, Dr. Peterson. Uh, you mentioned earlier that there's been a pervasive problem of uh, nihilism and moral relativism, uh, and that that can kind of be cured with a less naive optimism that's grounded in fact and what can actually be done to improve situations. Is there a way to communicate that message to a younger audience, say teenagers, in a high school environment, which is nowadays a hotbed for this kind of nihilistic, morally relativist thinking. Great, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you, I was thinking about saying this at the beginning, but I decided not to, but now I get to say it, because I got this question, so that's so cool. Um, I, I have plans, and so, <laughs> plan number one, I have worked with some people to design a website that will enable high university students to enter their course descriptions, their professor's name, the subdiscipline, and the university, and an artificial intelligence agent will tell them if the course is postmodern neo-Marxist indoctrination. <laughs> not, not only, and I have made tentative arrangements with someone to finance a advertising campaign for that site and so the goal is well to inform the consumer do you want to be educated or do you want to be indoctrinated and happily you'll be able to use the site equally for both purposes right because <laughs> if you want to if you want to take the 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 courses that I would regard as indoctrination then this will give you a way of ensuring that nothing that you get exposed to won't be of that sort so, and then I'm going to make a video to introduce that to university students and their parents and I'm going to outline what I think the universities are doing wrong. There's about 20 things they're doing wrong and, and they're seriously wrong things. And I'm going to start by describing the utility of a university education, a humanities education, because a humanities education makes you into the kind of autonomous individual that can go away from, that can be independent and can communicate and think and that has immense economic value right? not, not just spiritual value and cultural value but economic value and so there's I don't want to tell people not to go to university I want to tell them to go to university and grow the hell up and, and learn to communicate and think and I want them to avoid the people who will take the spirit away from them and so that's what that website is going to do I hope and the goal is to drop the enrollment in the indoctrination courses across the English-speaking world by 75% within five years. That's the goal. So, and then you asked, that you asked more specifically about high school students. Well, we have this future authoring program that has been used for university students and it produces about a 30% improvement in retention. And we've tested several thousand university students. Anyone can use it, by the way. It's not for university students, but 
it was easy for us to test its beneficial impact. Even if people only spend under 90 minutes on it, it still has approximately that effect, especially on young men, especially if they're ethnic minorities, especially if they're not oriented towards a career and didn't do very well in school. And so that's really cool, because it's really hard to design a psychological intervention that helps the people who are doing the worst. Most psychological interventions, so imagine there are people who are doing not so well and people who are doing well, and you produce a psychological intervention. What usually happens is the people who are doing well benefit even more, right? But this seems to work for the disenfranchised. So we're thrilled about that, really. And so we've produced a ver version for high school students. Yes. And so, but we don't have them look three to five years out into the future because they can't. And they don't know enough, you know. It's hard for full, full, fully mature adults to look that far into the future. High school kids can probably manage three to six months. And so we're going to have them concentrate on character development and, and what they want for their, from their friendships and how they would like to orient themselves in school and to start thinking about the sorts of person that they would like to be. And that never happens in schools. Weirdly enough, there's a guy named John Gatto who won the Teacher of the Year Award in New York City and then in New York State and then stopped being a teacher, by the way. Um, he wrote a series of books about the education system that explain why students in pre-university education aren't taught to be autonomous individuals. It's very interesting what he's discovered historically. But anyways, we're going to market that probably to parents and to university students themselves rather than to the schools because our experience has been that producing this sort of material directly for individuals works much better it's much more efficient and so then students will be able to or, or their parents will be able to purchase the program and the students will be able to use it to design their own personality in a manner that would make them thrilled to be alive let's say that would be the goal right if you like this video I recommend you to read this book. Get the book, link in the description below.